Okay, so back to the lawn. We saw that first clip where he was talking about highway congestion not existing anymore. There was another clip from that same whatever it was where he starts to go off on one of his tangents and Jill is in the background standing next to, I guess, one of the hosts of this debate. And you can see her start to worry that Joe Biden is losing it. And then she whispers something to the the woman that she's next to. And then they both go to try to stop it. It's you guys watch. I know we have your help. With my help, we're helping us working together. We're going to get a hell of a lot done for the American people. And we're going to make sure these things are. So anyway, <laughs> I guess if I stand here long enough, all those folks in the back are going to die of sunstroke. But I, I tell you what, once one after our I went to a local parade, a little parade uh, in a little place called Hocas in Delaware, a little right on the Pennsylvania border after our son had passed. And I was sitting there at home thinking he was his favorite parade. So I decided just to go into it. And I was walking along so in a worrying? small community. Mm -hmm. And three guys, four guys about your size came running up. The hell is she wearing? The Amazon? And they came running up. Swear to God, true God. story. Said, Joe. What's all this damn stuff about Pennsylvania? You're from Delaware. You're from Delaware. Yeah, but it never gets, it never leaves you. Oh my God. And you know what? She's not worried for him. Mm -mm. She's worried for herself. Right. Because she is just a narcissistic hag. Yep. I'm just, I, what, a, what a horrible human being she is. She's just yeah. horrible. And we've got a couple of people that are really digging at her um, coming up to play for you that are gold. Um, but there was a whole other controversy and another interview that took place over the weekend with a radio host. And I think it was in Philadelphia. I'm not, I think it was a Philadelphia radio station where he decided to do a couple radio shows with black hosts. And one of the women, um, you'll hear part of the interview, like a tiny little bit, a clip from the interview where he can't remember if he's a black vice president or if Kamala is the president or he just his thoughts are everywhere. You'll hear the clip first and then you will hear that radio host admitting on a news channel that she was fed the questions to ask in advance. Here is the little bit of the interview itself. I'm proud to be, as I said. The first vice president, first black woman, mm -hmm. to serve with a black president. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the all the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can what? do because together we there's nothing. Look, this is the United States of America. You each were uh, you asked four questions, and maybe that's what you were allowed to ask by uh, the campaign or the White House. But they were essentially the same questions, both interviews about accomplishments, progress in your respective state. What's at stake in the election? What he has to say about his debate performance and what he would say to voters who think uh, their vote doesn't matter or might sit this election out. Were those questions given to you by the White House or did you have or the campaign or did you have to submit questions ahead of this interview? The questions were sent to me for approval. I approved of them. OK, so the White House sent the questions to you ahead of the interview. Yes. Okay. I, I got several questions, eight yeah. of them, and the four that were chosen were the ones that I approved. Okay. And the reason I ask is not a criticism of either view. It's just that if the White House is trying now to prove the um, the vim, vigor, acuity of the president, I don't know how they do that by sending questions first before the interview, so that the president knows what's coming. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's a great point. Okay, so backing up to the first one, did he say that he was a black woman? So he was born <laughs> a poor black woman? Is that what he's doing now? Because, you know, you can't misgender or misraise the president, you guys. <laughs> so he's, if he says right? he's that. I know a lot of people are feeling the heat. You might be getting phone calls. You might be getting collection notices. You might be getting all kinds of statements from your credit card companies or other lenders saying, you're late, you're late, you're late. And if you are a person who is on that struggle bus, there is help. It used to be called Pivotal Debt Solutions. It's now called Zero Debt USA. And so before you do something drastic, like file for bankruptcy or take out loans that you can't afford to pay back, just take a deep breath and then visit zapmydebt.com because there you will be paired up with a certified debt specialist who can explain to you all the different aggressive strategies that they have for eliminating high interest rates, for eliminating debt altogether without you having to take out loans or without you having to claim or file for bankruptcy. So 
please, please lean on them. It is zapmydebt.com. Check them out today. Totally. Megan Kelly also on absolute fire about Jill Biden specifically and her attention seeking antics, her power hungry ego, all of it. This is amazing. She was on Pierce Morgan and said this. Think of Jill Biden's role here and her responsibilities. I think she's been exposed as a power hungry aspirant herself to <laughs> political power. Mm. She is on the cover of Vogue magazine right now. Yeah. Why? Because she wants to promote herself. She tweeted out a photo of herself sitting in the president's chair uh, not long ago when he was preparing for the G7 meeting mm. with his chair hanging over the back of the chair. She's not the damn president. Mm. Get out of the chair. No one wants you at the G7. No one elected you to lead us politically. Mm -hmm. And a couple right. of years ago, I did a bit that went viral on how she insists on being called Dr. Jill Biden everywhere. And all these left wingers got upset with me. She was, well, she is a doctor. She's got her PhD. She's in, in education, what have you. I don't make fun of that degree. My own father had that degree, mm -hmm. but my father would never have insisted somebody call him Dr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. He went by professor and that was a title he'd earned. Why does she insist on it? because she's power hungry, mm. because she has a small fractured ego that she needs built up. She needs the affirmation of strangers to give her an honorarium. That really means almost nothing. The only people who get to be called doctor legitimately, I understand, no disparaging of the degree, are medical doctors. If you can't say yes, I will resuscitate him when he has a heart attack on a plane. Stop <laughs> using that label. <laughs> when you get introduced at a book club or uh, on The View, which is what she does, all right? And I do think it's tied to what we're seeing now, the big reveal about her. Mm. She's power hungry. She wants it. What did we see from her on debate night? We saw her take the stage and guide the president of the United States down the stairs mm. like a mama would of a toddler, mm. like right. you and I both did when our kids were babies. And then after the debate, that clip that was everywhere with her saying, you did it. You answered all the questions. Mm. Again, speaking to her the way I speak to my dog yes. when he sits on command. <laughs> it really was. This is the leader of the free world. She mm -hmm. knows how infirm he is. She wants a shadow presidency. Yep, she is 100% correct. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But she's been doing it for years. I know. She's I been know. doing it for longer than a year, Megan McCain. Yeah. I mean, this is it. And I would imagine if you're close to the family, you've seen this behavior for longer than a year. My God. I just, I'm, yeah. And the doctor thing, do I need to call your dad a doctor? Cause he's never demanded it. He would never. Yeah. He would never. Her, Mock's father has a PhD in yeast genetics. I don't even know what that is, you guys. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know what it is. And one of the one of the smartest men ever on the planet. And he would never <laughs> demand that anybody calls him a doctor. So when she said that all that, I thought of your dad.